Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to our 150 attack series so in this series i'm going to show you a very beautiful and very effective way how to beat the modern fence how to beat the perks defense and in the continuation of our series i'm going to show you also the 150 attack approach against the king's indian defense so today uh, we're the, starting a different line today i wanted to show you this a6 method uh, with the idea to stay a little bit longer with the king in the center i'll explain of course what's all about and this is the line that you have requested several times here on my youtube chess channel because you probably are annoyed like i am uh to play against this line it's a very very popular line and it's a very often applied system because uh, with this flexible pawn structure d6 and e6 black will stay very very long in the king with the king in the center and many times you're launching this flank attack h4 h5 you're hoping that your opponent will castle towards the king side where you could of course attack him but he's still staying in the center and he's not castling into your attack and the cool part uh, with the move a6 is that uh, black is preparing here already a flank attack with uh, b5 then b4 uh, a5 and similar stuff so he's uh, destroying you here on the queen side so sometimes it's very very unpleasant to play against this types of structures against type size of uh, this types of systems so as i said this is a very very important video in order to get a better understanding of our 150 attack so in order also to understand the whole concept of the 150 attack please check out my series from the beginning, beginning because in this video i'm going to show you only this a6 lines not some other lines that that maybe also bother you so please as i said check this video is combined and then i think you have a beautiful preparation in the 150 attack so let's see now the new line and why is, uh, why this line uh, is so annoying in the continuation of the game so here our first move is of course e4 and we have now the modern defense so it doesn't matter uh, many times uh, the perch defense or modern defense are very, very similar many times you reach the same position after move knight to c3 we have in move d6 and we're going Going again into our 150 attack preparation we want to play queen to d2 again trade off the bishops launch a flank attack h4 h5 and similar stuff so we have explained the strategical ideas already in our series so black <coughs> pardon me uh, black doesn't want to castle king side now black wants to stay with the king in the center uh, hopes that you are castling queen side early and then he could attack you with a6 b5 because he has sort of a good control of the e5 square uh, then it continues also with the move knight to d6 so he's hoping that he couldn't be broken in the center of the board so of course if e5 immediately happens there are even some ideas to pass through with the move d5 and really fix the center lock the center if the center is locked then of course you cannot create uh, open files in the center you cannot attack uh, the uncastled king the king in the center of course so that's uh, very very annoying i think to uh, face this idea so as i said here with the move a6 black is already announcing an early flank attack what should we do here we should now force him to castle king side it's really hard to make that happen you have to be now really really accurate you have to know what you're doing first of all we're playing this move h4 now our opponent will play knight to f6 this is um the move with the double function first of all this move is preventing the early h5 move by white is also uh preparing knight to g4 attacking the bishop on e3 which could be very very annoying of course you don't want to lose the dark school bishop immediately so that's why we have to play f3 and we're going now into different lines usually we have played knight to f3 and similar stuff we have played also queen to d2 immediately now with the move f3 at least what we have to do here and we have a great preparation of the g4 move the g4 is now uh, our main tactical and strategic goal and then h5 again we can break uh, here the position on the king set so now our opponent will probably launch in a flank attack immediately with the move uh, b5 now we should go queen to d2 again preparing bishop to h6 so now knight from b to d7 can be played and notice now this is one of the critical moments of this opening line that you have to know whenever your opponent is playing knight from b to d7 um, uh, he's of course uh, covering his uh, activity of the light school bishop now you can play knight to h3 immediately because uh, you're not risking this uh, knight to be taken of course you don't have to play it you can immediately go queenside casting but the pr problem now after queenside casting is many times you face this line h5 h5 is a blockade idea by black and still black is staying with the king in the center he doesn't want to castle into your attack because if black plays now 
for instance the move king side casting then we are going into the normal 150 attack idea bishop to h6 bishop to h6 queen to h6 and now okay black is trying to lock the center with the move e5 but it doesn't matter we still can go uh with this normal idea h5 uh queen to e7 here many times you face this defensive idea black is trying to cover the seventh rank but now we can of course play king to b1 we can play knight to h3 knight to g4 knight to d5 d takes e5 so i really think that this is an unpleasant game for black if, if black takes here for instance the, the pawn on h5 then we can play uh, g4 immediately knight to uh, g3 is of course not working because uh, queen to h7 will happen so black needs to retreat here to uh, f6 and now we can play d takes e5 this is a very important move because it opens the default many times we have mentioned in our 150 attack uh, series so far that the default attack is one of the most important tactical ideas of this uh, of the sharp opening now after d takes e5 now we can go uh, g5 and the problem is now if you try knight to h5 now rook takes h5 is a beautiful beautiful tactical shot so g takes h5 now we can play knight to d5 and now you see there is this threat of knight to f6 there's nothing that can be done for instance if you try bishop to b7 knight to f6 uh, you see you cannot even take whatever you do it, uh, g takes f6 queen to g7 for instance queen to h7 is all, already a serious threat so the game is over so ever move kingside casting as we said h5 uh, is a must move uh, this um, prevents of course the further progress by white on h5 so we should now proceed with the brutal brutal move e5 and this is a move that you have to know in these types of structures although it causes now many many position problems on the queen side because you could face this move b4 but now you have to be again very very accurate you have to play knight to e4 it seems like a strange idea and it seems that it's liberating now uh black's position but actually after knight to e4 uh we could have here uh the um, f takes e4 but the problem is now d takes e5 is simply uh not working here for uh, for black because we can play d takes e5 after bishop to e5 of course knight to e5 is not working because again of the default attack so we have said as i said many times default 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 that's now a very very powerful uh tactical element for white so bishop to e5 now we can get an extra tempo against the bishop although we have lost the pawn but now look at this attacking formation that we can build bishop to c4 i don't know where to go we can go kingside casting but now bishop to d5 is going to happen the rook is hanging and again with bishop to d uh, c6 the uh, the activity on the d file is now unstoppable you lose the game for sure so as i said the, you could also try maybe here to fix the position with the move e6 not allowing maybe this move bishop to d5 but now with bishop to g5 now we can exploit the dark for weaknesses so you cannot basically protect everything d file is messed up this diagonal is messed up maybe in some occasions even some tactics are working with knight to f7 knight to g6 bishop to e6 so now you have to cover yourself look at this rook is coming into the game the attack is simply flowing so uh the white's attack is simply unstoppable casting queen to f4 everything is really really messed up so queen uh, here bishop to g5 knight to g5 and uh, they are as i said knight to f7 is weak uh, d file is weak e5 we can lock we can play even g4 here i think just to open the h file so uh the evaluation is already plus five here for for white so as i said this is something that um, um, black should try to avoid so after move uh, b4 and knight to e4 okay maybe uh, black can go uh here with the move knight to d5 but you know the grip we have talked about this tactical ideas many many times uh in our previous videos whenever this knight is on d7 and black has already played h5 and uh, he already weakened his pawn structure in front of the king you can guess what the best next move is e6 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 you should really memorize this attacking ideas because they're very important if you miss them i, I i'm sure that you would be um, would be bothered if you would miss this kind of a tactic because after f takes e6 look at this knight to g5 uh the pawn is saying okay maybe you can defend this pawn but at least i think white has now a really great attacking chances even if you lose for instance this bishop on e3 now it doesn't matter queen to e3 there's not a good way anymore to protect the light force even if you try maybe e5 still this bishop will come into the game and i would not love uh, to play now this position look at this knight to e6 is going to happen the queen is even getting destroyed here so as i said you should be careful uh with the with the black pieces in this types of structure because e6 is many times a beautiful beautiful tactical goal so as i said the most important thing here to recognize is the possibility of the movie e5 and many times we miss this because we don't want to 
have this kind of a control you know we would be we don't want to expose ourselves with the pawns immediately but that's exactly how we should consider this position because we have to say black stayed simply too long with the king in the center so let's see now different opportunities uh what uh, black can do immediately is of course uh to play the move h5 in these types of structures and leave uh here the long diagonal for uh the light square bishop so now black is not playing this knight to d7 idea but also what we have to say with the move knight to d7 black has at least uh controlled the uh, the e5 square now uh, we should proceed with knight to h3 this gives us now a uh, great opportunities because if black doesn't react if black doesn't have take out the knight on h3 then we can play immediately knight to g5 uh, and we can use now this square in order to attack black's position further so that's why we're analyzing now this bishop to h3 line which is very popular and uh, many times black is playing this line notice again that uh, black is staying still with the king in the center so this is now the main main goal of black staying and uh, attacking further the queen side hoping that you are going uh, to castle queen side so we have here rook to h3 knight from b to d7 so you see now black took and place now afterwards to move knight to d7 now we should go queen side castling now black could maybe try this idea c5 and okay it seems like a decent idea but again uh, we should simply take d takes c5 d takes c5 and now king to b1 first sl slowing down the pace of the game improving a little bit the position of the king because there are now many many positional problems in, in black's position for instance uh, we have to notice the d file is a huge huge tactical problem for instance if black castles immediately then we can play g4 and g4 seems like a mistake because you look at this g4 is already covered with the pawn is also covered with the knight but the problem is now after h takes g4 we have now f takes g4 and look at this the rook is protecting the bishop if you take now knight to g4 that is now a beautiful threat because the knight is lost on d7 and we have a great protection of uh, uh the bishop on e3 so this is also an attack that you have to know i think just by heart if even uh, if you maybe didn't um, calculate by yourself but this is something uh, must know theory of uh, of the 150 attack so as i said this is simply not working so the default attack uh, again bothers black in the continuation of the game after king to b1 uh, our opponent could maybe try queen to c8 uh, getting out of the range because uh, what we have accomplished i think at least in these types of positions is that uh, the queen is not coming to a5 because many times in the perks modern defense the queen is coming to a5 and causes uh, tactical damage here uh, around the square a2 now with the queen uh, queen to c8 move uh, black is in my opinion much much worse because now we should simply develop bishop g2 and still we're preparing the move uh here um g4 so even if black tries something i don't know a rook to c8 maybe to support further the attack on the c file still we can play bishop to e2 after something like uh, queen to c7 we can always attack uh, the queen and even if you try e5 bishop to g5 okay we'll find now some squares for instance the d5 square is now huge uh, weakness and if, even if castle happens then again we have this a uh, beautiful move g4 again notice after something like i don't know h takes g4 h takes g4 again you cannot take out uh, uh, the knight because of this lost uh, uh, lost knight but also here the g4 is uh, suddenly covered so as i said this is simply not working you could also try after potential uh, g4 b4 could be an opportunity then we can go knight to d4 d5 and after knight to d5 look at this e takes d5 and the pawn is rolling now this is now a supported pass pawn and i would not love to play now any more this position from black perspective the position is damaged here um, on the king side we can agree that finally we have opened and that's exactly what the parts of the modern defense player doesn't want to get where he has already this weakened pawn structure and he has castled king side so as i said after move king to b1 there's simply not the better move king side casting is sort of a must idea and now as we said with g4 we can break and enter so let's see now different opportunity um let's go to this uh, to this position that we have reached before again this with this idea h5 to block out knight to h3 again bishop to h3 rook to h3 and now again this idea knight to d7 queen said casting perfectly fine we can face now many times this idea knight to b6 uh but there is now again a huge positional problem again we want to play e5 whenever the knight on d7 leaves the protection of the e5 square uh, we should simply go bishop to d3 and the e5 is now a huge huge 
huge threat if that happens of course the move bishop, uh, move bishop to d3 as we mentioned before is not allowing the straights of queens we have seen also in our previous videos um this idea that when the bishop is standing in the way in between in uh, of the queens then of course no queen queen trades are possible so now with the move bishop to d3 the serious threat is uh now the move e5 and now i found really one a great game in play in the database in which here daniel dubov the top grand master daniel dubov got destroyed really in a tactical way he tried now to maneuver this knight knight from f to d7 uh he tried to have a control of the e5 score but actually this is not working and that's the beauty of the 150 attack we can go into even into some uh, three pawn at attacks here in the center uh here daniel dubov tried to move c5 but now for d takes c5 if you try now knight to c5 then uh, bishop to e2 we can step back and uh have i think again a decent game g4 is now again a huge huge tactical problem so in my opinion this is position perfectly fine for white so in the continuation of the d takes c5 daniel dubov tried b4 but now after knight to e2 even if you try again knight to uh, c5 then we can play bishop to d4 uh, you could maybe try here to move e5 but now uh, at least we can maybe take out this pawn and okay many times maybe black will even sacrifice some pawns just in order to have to some kind of an initiative here on the queen set but we can agree i think this is a good position for white especially even if knight to d3 happens then we can also uh get this rook on the d file so i think the d file attack will simply destroy black in the continuation of the game so here as we said knight to e2 was played here daniel dubov tried to knight, uh, the move knight to a4 attacking here the pawn on b2 and here we have e5 which is a perfect move by daniel dubov of moment um, uh, here you have here maybe the opportunity knight from a to c5 but now with queen to b4 again at least this pawn was lost so you could also try here e takes d6 uh, which opens also now the position in front of the king and that's exactly what we want to get here from white's perspective when we are playing against this king in the center positions because we want to open the e file we want to open the d file because black's king is not going to stay forever there if black eventually kills us then we we know the grip we have g4 uh, we have f5 we have e6 method so you find i think the best next move if your opponent castles king side because uh, black's main strategical goal is not to castle king side so uh, let's see now a different idea what black could also do after knight h3 here your opponent could play bishop to b7 he doesn't have to of course take out the knight but now we can play e5 immediately and uh, as i said when your opponent doesn't have a control of the e5 square i think e5 is perfectly fine because uh, now after d takes e5 d takes e5 okay bishop to d2 your opponent could try knight to d5 but look at this here in this position the evaluation is already much much better for white uh, uh this e6 it's such a great move that uh, bothers i think black many times in the continuation of the game okay maybe this could happen f takes uh, e6 now king side queen side casting knight to c3 after a couple of trades of pieces now with the move knight to f4 i'm not seeing a good way anymore how black is going to defend this weaknesses this weak uh, pawn on g6 the pawn on e6 then eventually h5 is becoming weak e7 is weak although we have also some structural weaknesses but i think we can defend them with um king to b2 and similar stuff so the point about this uh, sequence is that actually this move e5 is really really great uh you should really many times consider the move e5 because your opponent is stuck with the king in the center that's his main goal and whenever that happens opening the center is perfectly fine now with the move e5 i think you have a, a game that would be very very fun for you so uh, let's see now a different example uh what you could face is of course again this uh, knight to d7 method where your opponent is not uh taking out the knight has it uh at least the control of the e5 square launches still this flank attack on the with the move b5 now as we said we can play the move knight to g5 bishop to b7 queen side casting and that's now um a setup that we want to get notice okay this bishop didn't play so far uh it doesn't matter but uh at least it had so far a great activity the knight is on a good square this knight is on a good square we have a good control with the queen and the bishop we have still our uh default attack the rook is perfectly fine so it's i think a beautiful attacking formation so now what black could do maybe is this flexible idea we have talked about this flexible pawn structures also e6 uh 
whenever e5 happens then your opponent wants to lock the center by playing the d5 if uh, d5 happens then he wants to lock the center with the move e5 but now after move e6 we should proceed with a3 we're not allowing anymore the move b4 after queen to e7 now king to b1 and still uh, we're not messing up further our pawn structure now your opponent could try the move c5 but the c5 is very very risky because d takes c5 d takes c5 and now bishop to f4 this is also must no move in this type of structure because now if queenside casting will happen then bishop to d6 could be an idea and what we're trying to do we want to provoke e5 we want to pro be provocative here because after e5 fin finally the d5 is a weakness we can play now bishop to e3 and notice now when kingside casting happens what are we doing maybe pause the video and try to see now the best continuation try to play really in a beautiful 150 attack way here i think you got the grip finally because okay now it's simply time to play again the move g4 because after h takes g4 we can even pass through here with the move h5 that's now the beauty and if something like this happens then we can open the center the problem is now again you cannot take out uh here with the knight because uh the, there is uh, this tension on the um on um, uh on the default but first i think we should simply take out this one even if we get challenged look at this this is weak this is weak uh we can open of course the g file the h file the rook will come into the game so again it's a tactical loss game uh for for black so as i said my my opinion is that simply the birds or the modern defense are not good defenses especially when you know the common tactics we have seen many times this e6 sacrifice we have seen the d file attack h4 g4 breaks versus uh, e5 breaks versus very very important stuff that you have to uh, play repeatedly many many times i think uh these are motifs that you have to know please study also some different lines because we're not going to cover any uh, every line that is possible that's of course not possible in any opening series i hope you get what uh, what i'm trying to say but i think you got the grip you know what uh, you are attacking or what kind of an idea your opponent has and i think uh, we can cover many important ideas that's i think more important than just uh, know this um, uh, opening theory by heart, by heart but because this uh, this is not how you should learn openings you should really know first of all the most important ideas the most important strategies and then also the most important tactical ideas and then you don't have to just uh, learn this theory what happens if that happens basically you know uh, what kind of a position you can get out of this and you can you also know what kind of an end game uh, possibility you have maybe in this sequence so as i said this is something uh, worth a study in my opinion also this delaying idea with a6 and staying with the king in center is simply not working because eventually you find a way to break your opponent and we have seen many times when your opponent is casting then he's getting destroyed by this common 150 attack message so okay i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope that you realize these ideas we will uh, now uh, cover more lines of course of the 150 attack i hope you enjoyed the series so far and i hope that you have success while playing some of my suggested lines if you want to see more of the 150 attack please check out our series so far with some different ideas different methods for both sides and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chance is the best of course